we go. Um, 86B is solving rational equations. Um, so it's going to be what we did yesterday to a slightly greater degree. Okay, so it's not a whole lot new for the beginning of the lesson. Um, the second half of the lesson, there's some word problems that come into play. We'll talk you through those. But um, the first part is still just going to be we are solving, um, either using the least common denominator or cross-multiplying still, but they'll be a little fancier. No, no, no. Like, just take normal notes. That is just the last three problems that we're going to cover. So if you're, yeah, don't take notes on that sheet. You don't need the sheet yet. We'll get there. Um, okay, so for the first example here, sorry, I'm feeling really colorful today, so I'm going to be changing even more than normal. Um, if we have 4 over x minus 2 equals x minus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, now typically, what method would you use to solve this? Cross multiply, Cross multiply which you can do. It's just not as pretty. Um, does anyone see a different way you could set this problem up? <coughs> Esther. Exactly. If you pay attention to what you're given on the problem, something over x minus 2 has to equal that same something over x minus 2 in order for them to actually be equal, right? So if you're like paying attention as you go through this and not just <coughs> mindlessly doing the math, sometimes you can catch that, oh, hey, look, I could just take these two things and set them equal to each other, and it's a much easier problem. So for this one, we can actually just say 4 has to equal x minus 1, and you would add 1, and x would just be 5. Okay, so just don't forget, if they have the same denominator, their numerators have to be the same too. Okay, so you can just set them equal. Okay, that doesn't happen a whole lot, but there's an easy one for you. Example number two. So for this one, you have 2x plus 1 over 6 plus x over 2 equals x minus 1 over 3. Okay, so we're not cross multiplying on this one, right? There's too much going on here. Um, so we're going to find the least common denominator, which would be what right now? 6. six. We're going to take this whole thing and we're going to multiply by 6. Um, you might be tempted to distribute right now. Um, we're not going to distribute, and I'll show you why that is. You'll see. It just makes more sense not to distribute. If I multiply this here, I have 6 times 2x plus 1 over 6. Do you see now why it doesn't make sense to distribute? Because those 6s are just going to cancel out, right? So I wouldn't distribute. You could. It's not wrong if you do. It'll just take more work for you. So I would not distribute. Um, then multiply 6 here, so 6x over 2, and then multiply 6 here, so 6, and again, I'm not going to distribute, times x minus 1 over 3. Okay, now we get to do a little bit of slashing to reduce here. Um, the 6s reduce to 1, so we're left with 2x plus 1. 6 over 2 is 3. So plus 3x, don't forget you still have that x there, equals, and then 6 over 3 is 2 over 1. So we have 2 um, times x minus 1. This one I would just distribute now because we've done our canceling. So I'm going to distribute that 2 to both, 2x minus 2. And now it's just a matter of solve for x. So 2x plus 3x is 5x plus 1 equals 2x minus 2. So take away the two x's. You get 3x. Take away the 1. You get negative 3. And then divide. So x should be negative 1. Okay? Questions? Good there? All right, next one. Example 3. So this one you have 2 over n plus n plus 2 
over n plus 1 equals negative 2 over n squared plus n. Anyone see what we should do first? How? <laughs> Can you factor anything? n squared plus n, right? You can factor out an n. So if I do that, this becomes n times n plus 1, and that makes it a whole lot easier to find your least common denominator. What would your least common denominator be? n times n plus 1. So we're going to take this whole thing, and we're going to multiply... God bless you, by n times n plus 1, okay? Um, so if we multiply here, this is going to be 2n times n plus 1 over n. Um, multiply here, n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. Again, I'm not going to distribute. I'm not going to FOIL right now. I'm just going to leave it as n times n plus 1 times n plus 2, and that's over n plus 1, and that equals, and now here, negative 2 times n times n plus 1 over n times n plus 1. Um, again, if you want to FOIL or distribute, you're welcome to, but man, are you going to have a lot more work to do. So what do we do from here? Start slashing, start simplifying. So n over n, n plus 1 over n plus 1, n over n, and n plus 1 over <coughs> n plus 1. So what we're left with is 2 times n plus 1, and you can distribute at this point now. So 2n plus 2 plus n times n plus 1, you would, or sorry, n times n, you would get n squared n plus 2 is plus 2n equals negative 2. Um, hopefully at this point you can kind of see like, hey, I have an n squared in there and it's not going anywhere. So there's something quadratic happening here um, and I probably need a factor, so move everything over. So you have n squared. I'm going to just put this right in standard form. Um, n squared and then you have 2n plus 2n, so plus 4n, and then this plus, this minus 2, we're going to move over to the other side. So we have a plus 4 equals 0. Did you follow me on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if that's your setup, how does that factor? What can you multiply to get 4 that you can add to get 4? 2. two. Um, so you're doing n plus 2 times n plus 2 equals zero, so what's your answer? Negative Just negative two, right? It's negative two and negative two. You don't need both of them. So n equals negative two. Good? Um, okay, so I took this, right, and I simplified. So I have an n squared on the left, I have a 2n plus a 2n, so plus 4n, and right now I have a plus 2 over there, and it's equal to negative 2, right? That's on this side. So I just added 2 to both sides, so I get n squared plus 4n plus 4 equals 0. Is that what you were asking? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can't wait till I'm done. Go quickly. Um, all right, next one. This is the last one of these, and then we'll get to that handout. Example four. All right, so this one you have x over x minus 3 plus x over x plus 3 equals 2 over x squared minus 9. 
Um, do you see what you should do first here? Difference of squares, right? So this, what's x squared minus 9? Right, x plus 3 times x minus 3. So you're going to just get rid of this and drop the x plus 3, x minus 3 in. Um, what's your least common denominator then? x plus 3 times x minus 3. So we're going to take this whole thing um, and we're going to multiply by x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, so take that and multiply by x here. Um, and again, don't distribute and all that stuff. So x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. That's still over x minus 3. Plus, and now it's the same thing, x times x plus 3 times x minus 3, which is over x plus 3. We don't really need parentheses there. Um, equals, and on top you have 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Are you sick of writing that yet? Um, over x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay. So now we start reducing um, x minus 3 and x minus 3, x plus 3 and x plus 3, and then x plus 3 with x plus 3, x minus 3 with x minus 3. So what we're left with, and at this point you can start distributing x squared plus 3x plus, oh, not that one, sorry, this one's gone, x squared minus 3x equals what? Equals 2. You just have a 2 left there. Okay, so if you solve this, um, notice what happens here. It looks like it's a quadratic, but 3x minus 3x is 0, so those go away. You're left with x squared plus x squared, so 2x squared equals 2. You're going to divide by 2 on both sides. You get x squared equals 1, so what is your answer? Plus or minus 1. Okay? So you have to do a little bit of factoring first with today's, but then you got to do a lot of slashing because of it. Um, any questions on those types of problems? Are you good, Cindy? How is it one to x Because um, I distributed, so I had to multiply x times x plus 3. So it's x squared plus 3x, right? x squared plus 3x. And then here I had to go x times x and x times negative 3. So that's x squared minus 3x. So 3x minus 3x is 0. And I'm left with x squared plus x squared. So that's 2x squared. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, let me pull up the handout. Hmm. Hopefully this isn't going to mess up the video here. Okay, um, so three word problems and then we're done. These ones are a little odd. Um, they maybe feel a little funny the way you set them up. Um, but we're going to talk through how you do this. Um, it says, if it takes Caden three hours to do a job, what part of that job could he do in one hour? If it takes him three hours to do a job, what fraction of it is he doing in one hour? One third, right? One out of the three. Um, so in one hour, he could do one third of the job, right? Um, so how much could he do in X hours? X over three, right. Um, okay, if it takes Andrew four hours to do a job, what part of the job can he do in one hour? One fourth, okay, so in X hours, that would be what? X over 4, okay? 
Um, so now it says, suppose they both work on the job together. How long will it take working together? Okay, now here's how I highly recommend you set up these problems. Think of it as them separate. Separate's an A there, huh? Oops. Separate and together. Okay, so we have two kids, Caden and Andrew. Okay, when they do it separate, we said Caden um, can do it in three hours. Andrew can do it in four hours. Together is what we don't know. What would it take them to do it together? Okay, so that's our unknown. Now, the way you set it up is how you see up top there. You do together over separate for the one kid and together over separate for the other kid, and that equals one complete job. So you'll set it equal to one every time. Okay, so think together over separate. Um, and that will be helpful for how you set up the problem, okay? Um, so it would be together over separate for Caden is x over 3, plus together over separate for Andrew is x over 4, and that is one job, right? They complete the job. It's 100% of the job done. If that is then our setup, at this point, you should know how to solve it. What do we do here? Multiply everything by what? By 12, the least common denominator. So we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to multiply by 12. Okay, so on top, I would get 12x over 3. Um, the second one, I would get 12x over 4. And then don't forget, I don't know about you, but I always forget this one for some reason. Maybe because it's a 1. Um, 12 times 1 is 12. And then solve that. 12 over 3 is 4x. 12 over 4 is 3x equals 12. So we get 7x equals 12. Divide by 7. So x is, you could call it 12 over 7, or that works out to 1.7 hours. So what took... Caden, three hours alone, and Andrew, four hours alone. If they do the job together, they should get it done in 1.7 hours. Does that make sense? It's kind of a cool idea, right? Less than half for Andrew, slightly more than half for Caden. Um, all right, let's look at a second one. We'll see if you guys can help me set this up. So we're trying to do this right? Just to help us with the setup. So if you need to do that to help you with the setup, that's great. I, I absolutely need to lay it out that way. Okay. A father and daughter painted a bedroom in six hours. Dad said he would have taken, I just scribbled over my numbers, um, eight hours working alone. He's a painter by profession. Then Cameron wondered aloud, how long would it take me to paint the bedroom by myself? The father reminded her that he had paid a lot of tuition to send her to Valley, and having taken Algebra 2, she should be able to work that problem out. Dad said, oh, Dad, she said, like, like that was last year, but he encouraged her to write down the information and set up an equation. She did and had her answer in, like, no time at all. This is Mrs. Price for you. Thank you very much. Um, can you answer her question? She says this actually happened to her, by the way. Her and her dad painted a room, and he made her figure out how long it would have taken her by herself. I don't know if that's true, but that's what she tells her students. Um, so if this is the setup, okay, there are two people working here, a dad and Cameron. And remember, we want to know separate what it takes and together what it takes, okay? Um, so what goes uh, next to dad under separate? Eight hours. eight hours. It said he would have taken eight hours by himself, okay? Um, what goes for Cameron by herself? 
x. That's the one we don't know. Okay, so we're going to put an x there. Together, how long does it take them? Six. Together they painted a bedroom in six hours. Okay, so remember the setup. We do together over separate for each person. Okay, so you're going to set it up together over separate for dad plus together over separate for Cameron, so that's six over X, and that should equal what? One, one right? That's the complete, one complete job. Sorry. Is she snoring? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Poor girl. Um, okay. Um, so this is your setup, right? 6 over 8 plus 6 over x equals 1. What do you need to do to that? What? <laughs> what do you got to do? Multiply by, what's your least common denominator? 8x. We're going to multiply by 8x. Okay. Um, so when we do this, you're going to do um, 8x times 6 is 48x over 8 plus 48x over x equals, and don't forget this one, 8, 8x times 1 would be 8x, um, and then simplify. So 48 over 8, that would be 6x plus x over x is 48 equals 8x. So take away the 6x from both sides, and you get 2x equals 48, and then divide by 2. So x is 24. What does that mean? <laughs> 24 hours what? For who? Right, it would have taken her 24 hours by herself to paint the room. Obviously not a painter by profession, right? Um, so it would have taken dad eight, it would have taken her 24, but together they get it done in six. It's a good thing. Um, okay, last one. Three printers. Um, printer A, which is the really old one, can print the payroll in 12 hours. Printer B, which is an upgrade, can print it in eight hours. And printer C, which is brand new, can print the payroll in six hours. Um, it says at 9 a.m., just before the payroll was to run on the new printer, the power went out for three hours. When the power came back on, the boss turned to you and asked, if we connect all three printers to the computer, will the payroll still be done by 3 o'clock? While the techie dudes are making the connections, you quickly figure it out. How long will the payroll job take? Will it be done on time? Okay, so you have three printers, printer A, printer B, and printer C, okay? And we want to know separate, what do they do? And together, what do they do? So separate, um, what is A going to be? 12. 12. What is B? 8. 8. And C is 6, okay? What's together? That's the unknown, right? That's what we're trying to solve for. So all that would be x. Um, can you set up an equation from that? Remember, together over separate. No. What would it look like? X over 12. X over 12 plus, x over plus x over 8 plus x over 6 equals what? 1, One right? One full job. Get the job done. Um, what is your least common denominator here? 24 would work. You don't have to go that big. Oh, yes, you do have to go that big. Yes, you do. You have an 8 in there. <laughs> Just kidding. You should do 24. Um, so if you multiply by 24, you have 24x over 12 plus 24x over 8 plus 24x over 6 equals, don't forget to multiply that last one. I don't know why. Does it feel like you would forget that? I feel, yeah. I feel like I forget it every time. Um, so 12, or 24 over 12, you get 2x plus 3x plus 4x equals 24. 
Um, so that becomes 9x equals 24. So if you divide by 9, x is 2.6 repeating. Um, so first of all, that means it would take 2.6 repeating or 2 and 2 thirds hours is maybe a nicer way to write it. Um, the question, though, is, is it going to be done in time? So it's going to take two and two-thirds hours. If it shut down at nine for three hours, that means it started back up at 12, and they need to be done by three. Done in time. Isn't that fantastic? Um, so this would be, yes, it will be done in time. With how much time to spare? What? A third of an hour, which is 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes to spare. Lots of time to spare. Okay.